My next guest promised to take me on a sightseeing trip through scenes of her childhood. Not that her childhood was all that long ago, but in spite of that, her achievements throughout the music world are impressive indeed. We met and drove to Mount Aragal, a place that is very special to her. I know that in your early days, uh, and you, when you went to boarding school and all that, this had a special meaning for you, this particular spot, didn't it? Mm -hmm. When you're very young, it's very hard to assess when you're near home. But this was always the landmark for me, that I was just around the corner from home. It's, it's special here, and it's so peaceful, and it's the only place where I can actually come back to that I just forget about work. And that's really important, as you know yourself. Do you feel that your music sort of reeks of this kind of thing? This would have influenced me, definitely. Now, so many people, their childhood is something they can quite easily forget about, really. It's a part of their life. You say, what was your childhood? Oh, I was OK. And they just talk about it. Now, I, my childhood has always been very special to me. Now, you're exactly the same, aren't you? Yes, well, my childhood, there was um, so much music happening around me and that has a great influence on me. And it's, you know, to my parents, my grandparents, they were involved in music. And uh, it's, I come from a very big family and very happy sort of uh, memories of my childhood. How many of you were there? There's nine in the family, I have four brothers and four sisters. And where do you fit? I am, uh, I like to put it, the fourth youngest. The fourth? <laughs> Now, this particular part of the world is very much a Gaeltic theory, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, I've spoken to you about this before, and I envy your ability to speak such such great Gaelic. How much Gaelic did you speak when you were young? Well, it's, it was all Gaelic I spoke until I went to school, which was around three or four, and then I would have learned how to speak English. But that's all I heard, because around here they only speak Gaelic. And you, you sing a lot in Gaelic now, do you? Uh, yes, it's, it's uh, because it's my first language, so I'm extremely comfortable when it comes to... I can express myself so much better in Gaelic. Now, you're going to, you're going to sing one of your songs for us, and uh, which is called Lihe Gyal isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, I know enough to know that that's, that is the, the sort of the lovely days of my youth, and the, the sort of bright and happy days yeah. of my youth. When, did, when and why did you write that one? I think we had decided we'd like to uh, work on an Irish song, and it was in the vein of um, traditional um, Irish music. Now, b just for people who are going to listen to the song, now, just tell us what the rest of the words are going to say, so they can try and follow it as it goes along. It's... Well, it's basically written in a lament form. It's a horn is a horn, which is crying, and it's really crying on the the loss of my youth and it's, it's gone forever, and it's basically talking about the happy uh, memories I had of my childhood. Uh, you haven't lost your youth yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear the song. Well, we've just broken our little journey to pop in at a place called Leo's Tavern. Leo happens to be Enya's dad, and he's sitting here with you. It's lovely to see you, Leo. Delighted to meet you. Because I've just discovered, actually, that chatting with Leo, that. Way back in the late 40s, I was on the old dance band circuit around this country, and I used to come and play at the, the local little church hall here mm -hmm. down the road, uh, and in many of the villages around here. And you were on the dance band circuit in those days. Yeah, that's months, right. Yeah, we had a dance band here, an old family dance band. My really? father, my mother, and my brothers, and my sister, and myself. But well, one thing I noticed just sitting here talking to you now, you've, in all that years, you've never taken a drink, have you? No. Well, that's a brave thing, because it's not easy to spend your life in dance bands no, and not take a drink. I know. Now, in those days, in places like this, and where I come from, uh, music was very much part of a community thing. We used to go to little functions and get together and make music together. I know people do that today as well. But we didn't have television and we didn't have a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, of diversions, as no, they say. even radios. So, yeah. Now, was there a very close-knit community here when you were young? Mm -hmm. It was very much so, especially with the family. Um, it was a very big family, and because of Mammy and Daddy being involved in music, it was inevitable that we would get involved in music. And I can always, I mean, I can always remember sort of being entered for call when I was very young. And it was just inevitable for me that I would want to study music and carry it through. 
Yeah. That's my I better explain what fesh kjol is, uh, <laughs> in yes. case anybody doesn't know. And, uh, it's a festival yeah. that they have in Ireland. It's like a local festival. Kjol is the word for music, and fesh is a sort of a festival, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you have yeah. dancing competitions and singing Absolutely. competitions. Yeah. You get little medals and things to wear right. to show you you're one of the good ones. Yes. Now, all of the people I've been talking to travel an awful lot because of their success in the music yeah. business. Mm -hmm. And when you when you travel a lot, you give a certain uh, I suppose you give a certain impression of Ireland, whether you like it or not, you're a sort of an ambassador, you're going around the country, and people do have some very impress funny impressions of Ireland, actually. There are still people it's around the world mixed, yeah. Yeah, who think yeah. that we have sort of pigs mm -hmm. in the kitchen and all that sort of thing, and they still don't know really what Ireland is like. Now, what would you like people to think Ireland is like? Well, for me, it's very special for me, especially in Guidor. Um, I come up, you know, very often back to Guidor. And generally, um, they should see Irish people as very open and warm people and very happy. And uh, all these other stories, they should really try and forget them. <laughs> Before we go, can I thank you, Leo, for having us here? Delighted lovely indeed. To see and you're welcome at any time. Thank you. I hope to see you soon lovely again. Lovely to see you. And let's go. This is Mwaharagalan. To translate that, it would have meant the sheltered plain. And you spent a lot of time here when you were a child. I've been looking for your sandcastles, but they're all gone. You spent a lot a of time gone. playing here on, on, on Sundays, I suppose. You would come here with your parents, would you? Well, this was like in the summertime. We used to come down here early in the morning and spend all day here, the family. And we'd leave here about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the evening. And it was just exploring all around here. It was just great fun. Because we were going to do this uh, thing together, and you know, I've spoken to an awful lot of people uh, about, you know, asked them what they thought of your music and so on, so I get very honest opinions from different... And it's, it's lovely, really, because so many people have said things to me like, well, I can't describe it, really, yeah. but... but when I'm feeling terribly fed up or depressed or anything, I just put one of her albums on and it has the most lovely soothing effect, effect on me. Now, you must get that yeah, a lot, do you? Th that is, a, it seems to be to a lot of people, they want to conjure up their own emotions and their own imagery with the music. And uh, I think it's absolutely wonderful. People have said, you know, quite unprompted, they say things like, I don't know, it's, it's there's something lovely and warm and spiritual about it, it has that effect. On me. Well, it's to do with the love I've had for voices, um, choral work, Gregorian chant. It's it's fascinating the way the voices can swell in and out. It's it's oh, it's just wonderful. You know, there's nothing else that can do that really. Yeah. When I was young, uh, in the early days, I used to sing a lot of the Gregorian chants. Really? Oh yeah, I used to do it. And Incredible. I, and I loved it so much, yeah. and, and I, I still listen to it now, every now and again. And that's the same thing, you see. It has that sort of, um, I don't know, it, it well, pacifies me. It, it's, it's, it's like the voice can be used as an instrument. You know, you can sing solo, but also, uh, it's just when you put layer upon layer of vocals, like we work with it, it's it just a blend. You don't really hear that this is a hundred voices or two hundred voices recorded. It's just an overall beautiful sound. Now, another thing about this place was the fact that you had a very, very close relationship with your grandparents, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And they, they were buried just near here. The, the Maragallan graveyard is just right beside here. And in the line of the song, the loss of comfort gone before is referring to them. Because the, the beach attracts me to it. I love it. It makes me very happy. But now with my grandparents resting there, there's an element of sadness involved with um, being so happy to be back here. The song on, on your show, which you're going to do for us now, uh, I didn't realize that you've done it several times. You've been filmed and talked about it to other people. But this is the first time you've come to the yes. actual inspiration. This is, this is really special for me because, I mean, this is what the song is about. It's about Myra Gerhard standing on this beach. And it's a great opportunity to be here and to sing the song.